Today we're talking about final guide alignment and a tip-top wrap. Y'all stick around. In the last video, we had just started wrapping these guides, and while y'all were gone, I finished out the wrap. Uh, gonna show you how I do my final guide alignment, and then we're gonna pull the tip-top off, reinstall it, and then do a tip-top wrap. So first things we're gonna do is I'm gonna loosen it up here in my uh, in my power wrapper, my stand's loose, where I can see what's going on. And then I will stand above, I've got my trigger straight up. And then I'm gonna stand above and just make sure that the guides are even on the blank. You have the same amount on each side where the blank is very narrow here. And then as you get towards the bigger end of the blank, you're gonna just line them up straight on the edges and then you're gonna split the difference with the blank on each side of the guide. All right, I got those very close. The next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take it out of my wrapper completely and I'm gonna look down it from the trigger, holding it up against a white background and just making sure that I've got them perfectly in line. So my transition guide is just a little off. Like I was telling you in the last video, I don't use the guide foot glue because I want to be able to make final adjustments and slide these guides around underneath the thread. All right, so one, two, three needs to go right a little bit. One, two, three. Nope. One, two, three. Okay, those look good. We'll put it back in the wrapper. I'm gonna put the trigger back up top again. Lock it back down. And then we'll get to work on this tip top. Now with this tip top, when we first put it on, when we we're just doing the preliminary uh, guide layout, I just did a quick job of putting it on. What I'm gonna do now is heat it, pull it back off, make sure I've got plenty of glue in it, reapply the glue and reinstall it. So let's get going. Not as complicated as it sounds. I'm gonna take my lighter here. I'm just gonna heat it just a little bit comes right off now we had a pretty good coat of glue underneath there so I was that would have been fine as a final install I'll put a little more on it Now you have a little bit of glue residue left in from before. I'm just going to heat that real quick. I'm going to slide it on again. Line it up straight. My trigger is on the top for sure. I'm going to let that glue cool just a little bit until it gets tacky and then I'll peel it. Feels right off just like that came off really nice and clean next thing we'll do and I don't do this on all my rods But we're gonna do a tip-top wrap just so I can show you how to do it. That's next Okay, let's get started on this tip-top wrap. I Don't do a lot of tip-top wraps on my heavier rods my flipping sticks. I will but I Don't think it helps in most situations especially on a spinning rod or a spiral wrap casting rod the only reason you do a tip top wrap is to keep it from twisting and with a spinning rod or with a spiral wrap casting rod you don't have that that uh, rotational torque on the tip anyway um, you can do it for accent um, i like i said i will do it on my large diameter rods uh, just because of the added safety factor of keeping it from twisting but again with the smaller black the smaller blanks that i'm building on typically i won't put a tip top wrap in so here's how i do it um, I treat it like it's the lower foot 
of a double footed guide. So I'm going to pin the thread on the downstream side. I'm going to start my wrap. I'm going to come all the way up on the tip top. And I'm going to cross over just like you would any other wrap. The only thing that makes this really difficult is you don't have a stand out to the right and it's really flimsy in here and you got to watch your thread tension very carefully okay so now we'll pull that tag loose and i'm going to let that run all the way back down to the blank or pretty close to it because the tip top is very slick compared to the blank material itself Okay, now we'll trim that tag out of the way. Now it's going to jump and you're going to have a gap. Right there. I'm not too worried about it yet. I'm going to run this wrap out. Four or five more wraps. I'm going to put a thread pool in. And I'm going to get, I'm going to put about eight wraps in this just because the smaller, oops, that was almost tragic. The, the closer you get to the smaller end, the harder it is to keep these wraps tight, especially when you're doing a pull through. And that's going to hang again there. And that'll do it. Oh, we'll do one more. Okay. So I'm going to pin it down with my, hold it down with my finger here. Cut that out of the way. Drop the tail. Drop the tail through the loop. And then this is where it gets tricky because it, it just pulled out of my wrapper there. Okay, we got that pulled through. We're going to cut this end. And we're going to have to do a lot of burnishing. So you need to slide a couple rows of these threads off the tip top and down to the blank area. Pack these in tight. And there you go. You have a tip top wrap. All the thread work is now done, I've checked my alignment i've burnished all of my threads to make sure i don't have any gaps i checked for little uh tails hanging out i burned them off now we're going to use the cpx which is a polyurethane one part thread finish and a color preserver i'm more concerned about color preserver in this situation which could do multiple thin layers of this in lieu of epoxy however we're only going to do a couple of these in this video because we're gonna to need to open the door and get the fan going so let's get started quickly it is very thin you put it on with a brush just like you would epoxy Ooh, it's pretty smelly I'm just brushing it on the threads here, getting it to soak into the threads themselves. This will bond the threads to the blank and to themselves and to the guide. This also gets rid of any air that you have that's trapped in the threads or in the gaps. 
So when you do your final coat of epoxy, you have less likelihood of air bubbles pop up. Alright, there is the first one. We'll go to the second one. It's just like epoxy. Except it's a super thin and it will dry in about 20 minutes. So there you go. Nothing to it. I'm going to open the doors, get the fan going, finish this up. Next time we're going to be talking about two-part traditional epoxy. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.